Hi guys, tonight we are uh, making worm food. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how we make our worm food, how that process goes, how simple it is. And uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, a lot of people that buy worms and that do the tour, they always ask, what do you feed them? How do you feed them? And this is exactly what we do. So uh, we have a local grocery store in Emory County, uh, Utah and they donate their uh, vegetables and their fruits to me twice a week. And that's what I use for the worm food. And so I'm grateful for them. I'm gonna trade and, uh, and give them some worm castings next spring for their staff so that they can use them in their garden. So kind of a little bit of a trade off there, but instead of this uh, produce going to the landfill and being wasted, we are going to blend this up, uh, use it for worm food, produce castings, and those castings will go back into the ground and they will help build uh, a really good garden to make the black gold. So anyway, so what we do is uh, we have the produce here and we just cut it up into little chunks. And uh, my worms are like pets. So I try to give them a little bit of a variety. Uh, I've got some sweet peppers in there. I've got zucchini in there. I'm going to throw some apples in there. They really like sweet stuff. So if you want them to, to really dig into their food, you want to make sure you add some sweet, um, uh, uh, fruit in there or molasses is a is a good uh, additive to the food and that helps them to dig in there so uh, in order for this blender to work right uh, they heat up so you do have to add water one thing you have to be really careful with is the more water you add the more water goes into the bin because your fruit breaks down as it is and that it as it breaks down, it releases a lot of water into the bin. And so not only am I adding water, I'm adding fruit and vegetables that are going to release a ton of water into the bin. And so I'll show you what I do to counteract that. But that's all I'll do. I'll just add this in. I won't put a lot in there because if I put too much in and I try to overdo it, the blender will heat up and then it slows me down. I've gone through a couple blenders. We do a lot of food and, uh, so I just get on, if you get onto Marketplace or uh, Classifieds, you can always find a blender that you can, uh, that's pretty cheap. And uh, I got a couple brand new blenders that are about $200 blenders and I got them for about 50 bucks. I've burned through those since and so now I have my wife's out here and so hopefully she's not watching that video, but um, that's what I'm using today. So anyway, I add that in there. We'll blend it up here. It'd be really good if I plugged in the blender before I started my videos. So anyway, it's plugged in now. We're going to blend this up. And adding that water makes a big difference. Um, hopefully you can hear me over this. But I'm going to blend that up pretty good. And as you can see, I should get a little closer here. That is, uh, there's a lot of water in that. So if you look, that's a problem. You don't want to feed your worms that much water. You'll add too much water to your bin. Don't want standing water. In a couple of my other videos, I kind of explain why. Um, you, you don't want to have any standing water. So what I do is with that, I supplement it with my worm chow. And it's called Big J's Worm Chow. And what I have inside of it, it's very simple. I have chicken crumble for protein. I have wild bird seed in it, and I also have some uh, pelletized molasses in it. That gives it some sweet, and then I also have some uh, sweet horse feed in it too. So it gives it some protein, um, it gives it a little bit of sweet, but it mainly what it does is it absorbs the water that's in the produce and in the water that I put in to blend, and it'll absorb that and, and prevent it from having too much water. So I'll add that in there and you'll see the blender will really start to work now because it's taking that dry and, and happening to work harder. And I'll show you here in just a second what it looks like when I'm done. Sorry about the noise. And that's already blended because I blend all the I blend the uh, wild bird seed and the chicken crumble. And now, if you want to come take a look at this, that right there, 
it's still a little bit liquid. That's about perfect for feeding. And if I let that sit, those uh, that crumble and the worm chow that I put in there, it'll continue to absorb and, absorb and expand. And then you don't have the water like you normally would have. So once that's done, I put it in a garbage bag, whatever's cheapest. And as you can see, it's pretty thick coming out of there. And that's exactly what we want. But that consistency right there, that's enough for the worms to really dig into. And I'll feed them this and it'll be gone within a day or two. And so we just speed up that process. As we talked about, worms don't have teeth. And so instead of waiting for them to have to let this uh, apple decompose and to build microbes and break down, we're pretty much speeding that process up. And so they'll come in, dig into this, produce the castings. And I use this on my breeder bins and I use it on my big uh, casting bins. And they, they do really well. And so as you do this, obviously I have a lot of work to do and it takes a long time doing each of these. But as your hands get dirty, it's good to have a bucket of water there. Then you can wash your hands off so you're not getting the food all over the place. And then, like I said, I just put it in a garbage bag. I don't fill it up too full and I throw it in the freezer. I know how much food I need to feed them every, uh, every few days. And so I'll bag this up, throw that in the freezer, let it freeze up. And then uh, the day before I go to feed, I will take it out, let it thaw out. And a lot of times the water will dissipate from the food and I'll just drain that water out and I'll have the food left over to give the worms. And so that is how we do it. And you can really, I mean, there's a few things that they say to not feed your worms, uh, citrus, uh, like hot peppers, onions. I can tell you, and a couple of my mentors can tell you that they've not really seen that. Like they will feed their, their worms tomatoes. They will feed them citrus. They will feed them onions in smaller amounts. But they, they said that the, the worms really will just dig into it just like anything else. And so I will add tomatoes to this. I will add citrus. And I have had no issues with a worm kill off or getting too uh, much acid in my bins. You just want to be mindful and you just want to, you'll know whether you've got issues with your bin or not. But I pretty much add everything um, that you can buy in the produce section of the grocery store. I feed that to my worms and they thrive off of it. And so I wouldn't show you this if it didn't work for uh, our worm farm and the success that we've had. And as we continue to breed worms and have more mouths to feed, it's taking more and more produce and we're seeing that. And so that's how I know we're being successful is it's uh, taking a lot more produce to feed and they're eating it quicker. And so now we're separating our bins and making new breeder bins and, and uh, growing the business. So anyway, that's how we feed our worms. That's how we blend it. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. And uh, just if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to call me. My phone number is 435. 650-3308 and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have because I know it can be a little bit intimidating as you get started and not knowing oh should I feed them this or feed them that my advice is to just dig in and start doing it and you'll find that you'll be successful so but I am always available um, if I don't answer my phone I will uh, reach back out to you and answer those questions so if you haven't done so please like and subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel that helps get my name out there and hopefully it's educational for you. Um, I'm going to be producing more videos as I have time. As you can see, this is very time taking. And, uh, but I want to do some other videos with uh, our nursery update, uh, showing you the hatching of the cocoons, how we sift with our new sifter. So watch for those videos and you can see those as you subscribe and hit the notification bell. It'll let you know when we have new videos. So. Thank you for your support, and uh, we're excited to, uh, to show you these. Have a good one. All right, real quickly, I thought it would be a good idea to show you how we feed the food once we have uh, blended it up. And so here we have a European Nightcrawler breeder bin. And so what I will do is I will just get a spoonful of the, the food that we just blended up. You can see it's a pasty consistency and we will just put that in on the top here and I will make a line with it on the top of the breeder bin. A couple of reasons why I do this is if for some reason this fruit and vegetables, if they break down and release a bunch of water, 
they will, uh, it'll kind of just stick to this area right here and that cardboard will absorb it. If it gets to be too wet, which I haven't had happen yet, they can get out into this side here and get out away from the water. But I have not seen that. Uh, most of my worms are right underneath that food where it's the wettest and that's where all my cocoons are at. And so in here you can see, I've probably got some worms down underneath there. And these, these babies are healthy. These are European night crawlers right here and they don't like being messed with but you can see these are going to be our fishing bait next year and uh, they're just healthy and producing cocoons like crazy and and so that's one reason the next reason is is because they're producing cocoons and breeding they will come up here and eat the food and they will breed naturally because they are up there together they don't have to go looking for each other so I put that in a line so that they will come up they will breed naturally and produce more cocoons and so far we've been super successful with doing it this way but that's how we uh, feed the worms once it's been blended up so like I said if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out um, with anything uh, phone number is 435-650-3308. Thanks again for watching.